Art is a key way we understand ancient cultures and civilization, but when talking about Hellenistic art, we are talking about the art that was prevalent following the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC and ending with the conquest of the Greek world by the Romans in 146 BC. In particular, Hellenistic art aimed to represent individualism and emotions within human experiences. However, Hellenistic art aimed to imitate classical figures too and also create three-dimensional art. It can be difficult trying to determine what these Greek sculptors and artists were trying to represent. However, we can determine similar themes between various artworks. Hellenistic art aimed to portray the necessity of emotions in human experiences, with one of the most famous portraits at the time, the statue of Demetrius I of Syria, presenting the Seleucid king as masculine and muscular. He holds a spear in hand and is aggressively demonstrating his power and supremacy because his body is absolutely enormous with respect to his head. The statue of Demetrius of Syria stands at a whopping seven foot tall, with the portrait emphasizing his brute force and power and his facial expressions demonstrating the intensity of battle and toughness in becoming a Greek warrior. It's further exacerbated through his tight muscles, which evidence his tension and stiffness, arguably reflecting his stress from constant military activity and the fear of battle. Now, this is important because the Hellenistic kingdoms were always fighting. They were in forever wars, constantly battling with one another. So the Hellenistic art is aiming to reflect the military, social and political tension during the Hellenistic period. Hellenistic art portrays other Greek rulers like Alexander the Great, Pericles of Athens, Ptolemy I Sota and Antiochus III with the statue of Antiochus once again presenting determined facial expressions, seriousness in the face, and a cloth band over his head acting as the equivalent to a crown. Another similar style from the Hellenistic period was the sculpture in the round, where art was designed to look three-dimensional. This was a key differentiator between classical and Hellenistic art, and the artwork that really reflects this style was the Epoxiomenos of Lysippus, which depicts a young man actually removing oil off himself after physical activity. The arms, the leg, and the head of the Epoxiomenos all stand out from different angles. The art was designed for viewers to look at him from all angles. The arms of the figure are actually extended and cross in front of his body, suggesting that he is unstable. Now this is quite different to the portrait of Demetrius of Syria, if we think about that, with the Epoxionomos portraying emotions of instability and uncertainty during the Hellenistic age. While Hellenistic art liked to focus on people in positions of power, Hellenistic art also involved religious dimensions too. The praying boy sculpture presents a religious theme to human emotion. The sculpture suggests that a young boy is praying to the gods, but the reasons for his prayer are unknown. However, we do know that theism and piety and respect for the gods was very common during the Hellenistic period and the Greek world before it, with other statues representing Apollo with his head and arm towards his right side and statues of Zeus, Thunderbolt and the nude Aphrodite. Hellenistic art captured intellectual and philosophical movements during the period. The Hellenistic period was famous for several developments in Greek philosophy, extending beyond the classical philosophers of Socrates, Plato and Aristotle. Instead, philosophical schools like Epicureanism and Stoicism became prevalent and Hellenistic art aimed to express their ideas. The most profound art was the sculpture of Chrysippus, a Stoic philosopher from the period. Now, Stoicism focused on living a life in accordance with reason and with nature, and that human beings should understand their own nature correctly. The Stoics thought that this was crucial for human beings to understand what was in their control, their ability to change particular circumstances, and as a result, their own happiness. 
The sculpture of Chrysippus represented the Stoic philosophical tradition and how the Stoics would reason and communicate with each other. This is because Chrysippus is hunched forwards and is leaning on his elbow with his right hand extended. His boldness and beard symbolizing his loss of lavishness and style, but instead replacing that with his obtainment of wisdom and knowledge. While Hellenistic art reflects power and human potential, there are some artworks that point to the contrary. The drunken old woman statue depicts a lady holding a wine jar and under one meter tall. She's drained from the constant drinking and arguably reflects drunkenness and the flaws of it in ancient Athens. There are also some depictions of men inspecting their own feet, perhaps reflecting the lives of ordinary people instead of figures of power and prestige. But that brings us to the end of the video on Hellenistic art. I'll be doing a video on Hellenistic philosophy very soon, but if you enjoyed the content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot.